I've had it the last couple of times, so I'm just trying to make sure that I get my turn. Um, welcome to Lost Skills. <laughs> and um, usually my introduction to Lost Skills, we didn't have a PowerPoint this time, but um, the Lost Skills uh, program has been developed because there's so many people who don't know how to bake bread or do a garden or can or, you know, especially nowadays. And um, we have been so dependent on the system, the commercialization, the government, the whatever, you know, that um, then what do we do when <laughs> we don't have as much or whatever, you know? And all of us have had emergencies at one point or another where somebody is out of work or somebody is sick or whatever. And if you know how to do these things, a lot of them, then you're much more prepared. So that's the goal of the lost skills. And um, uh, like I said, my name is Martha Rentfro. Today, Diana Runnels is going to be helping uh, do a demonstration, and Melody Maratz is also. And we want to thank all our audiovisual guys helping us out. Um, and one thing that makes us it makes it easier for us to do a good job is we want to ask the Lord to help us so that we can do it the right way for you. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for everyone who has come uh, today. We ask that you will be with us in this program. Bless e uh, each of the presenters. And um, Lord, we want all of this for your honor and glory. We cannot do it alone. And we thank you and praise you for your help. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started. I think, Diana, you're going to go ahead with the, you do have in your handout, you have the recipes. Diana's going to be doing the first one. The last one on the, uh, I think, page five would be the one that Melody will be doing, okay? There's another recipe in there that is my recipe, and that's the one uh, from all this bread, okay? And the, it's not my recipe, it's one that I use <laughs> from somebody on, um, on YouTube. So um, then we'll be talking more about um, grinding wheat and all that kind of stuff, which not, not all of our breads is done with home ground wheat, but we will do some of that, and we will also talk about the benefits of it and stuff, um, stuff too. So go ahead, Diana. Good afternoon. I'm going to be making um, one loaf in the Cuisinart and then one loaf good old-fashioned by hand. Um, when you make bread, there's usually just five ingredients, water, flour, yeast, water, sugar, yeast, flour, and salt. Or you can use honey in place of the sugar. Um, and I will also use a little bit of oil, but usually those first five basics is all you need. In the, um, <clears throat> I'm going to do things just to trace out of order here. I'm going to get my yeast going for my hand mixing. And then hopefully that'll be ready when we're done using the Cuisinart. So I've got one cup of water in here. Is this showing? Okay. And I don't want my honey to stick to my tablespoon. So I'm just going to squirt that. And I'm going to put two tablespoons of honey, one or two, we'll do two, into my warm water. You don't want your water too hot or the yeast will die and you don't want to put salt with your yeast. But you want your water warm maybe 105 degrees, 80 to 105 degrees. I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. And then the one loaf recipe calls for two teaspoons of yeast, so I'm just going to put that in here. Do I need to scoot it over? And I'm just using regular yeast in this batch. 
So I'm going to put two teaspoons here. And I'll let it start doing its thing while I work on the Cuisinart. So I'll just set that aside for now. Okay. When I use my Cuisinart, I put my dry ingredients in first. So I've pre-measured, I have two cups of white flour. I have one cup of wheat flour. I have a teaspoon of salt. Can you see that here okay? Okay. All right. And this is about, let's see, water. This is about um, two, two and a half teaspoons, so I'm just going to use this whole package. This one, though, is the instant rise yeast. I know when I dump my yeast onto my salt, it's, I'm going to mix it up right now. And I'll just mix the flour a little bit. Frequently I'll put my honey in here, but since I, I'm just going to go ahead and add it in here this time. I'll just dump because I just put my two tablespoons down. And my warm water. I have one cup of warm water, and usually in the Cuisinart, I don't need quite all of the water. And I want to pour my water in really slow if I just dump it, it's just going to glob up, so I need to pour slow and mix it. Oh, I said I was going to add a little oil, didn't I? So about a tablespoon. Pretty soon it will start pulling away from the edge. My Cuisinart came with two blades. One is a metal blade for cutting, and the other one is the plastic dough blade. I should have showed you that. Um, and the recipe said if you use like less than two or three cups of flour to use the metal blade, but I have not actually made dough with the metal blade. So hopefully this will turn out right because this is the one I've been using. Starting to look crumbly. We'll just have a look inside real quick. Can yeah. I don't know. Can you see that? Okay. Does it show?
This might be the first time that I've ever needed more water. And pretty soon it'll start somersaulting around in here and that will knead it for you so you don't have to do it by hand. Yeah, it got a little, didn't turn out quite like I wanted it to. I'll put a little bit of flour here. Um, and if you don't mind taking that little bowl and putting a little bit of oil in there. This is pretty moist. <laughs> pretty moist. Um, the honey needs to stay. The cup can go. Yes. So the machine did most of the kneading for me. So I'm just going to she put some oil, you put oil in here, right? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little more oil in here. Good, thank you. I'm gonna roll it around and flip it over and I'm gonna get a, a dishcloth and I'm going to um, wet it and um, wring it out and then let it sit over this while this rises. All righty. Yeah, oh, it's right there and I'll just rinse my hands. Okay. Start the other one. Let's see. So if you can see, the yeast has started bubbling up in here. I had my honey, my water, my yeast here. Oh, so I don't need that. I am going to go ahead my water, honey, yeast, so I'm going to have my flour, my, I already did that. I'm going to mix my flour in. Actually, I had some oil. My oil? Ah, oh, here it is. I'll just put a little bit of oil in there. So my yeast, and this is just regular yeast. The other one is rapid rise. So I've already measured my two cups of white, my one cup of wheat. Which is also what I shouldn't have done. I just realized. Because the white you're going to add until it thickens up. And my salt. amounts of whole wheat too, so mm -hmm. some different varieties. Right. And we're going to show you how, what it looks like to grind wheat berries too if you haven't done that before.
I'm just going to knead it for a while. The longer you knead it, the better the gluten in the flour works into it. How long do you usually like to knead? Pardon? How long do you usually like to knead? Um, depends how much time I have and how my dough feels. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the purpose of, right. you know, the kneading is to work that gluten and to make it soft. It makes it soft and stretchy, stretchy. and then that will make it rise better later on. And hold its rise. That's likely to fall when you're moving it. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's a little bit sticky. When I'm done, I should be able to just poke it with my fingers and... Um, It'll feel real soft, and it'll leave an indention, but it won't stick. It won't be sticky and stick to me. So, Diana, as you go ahead and knead that, I think that Mel Melody can go ahead and get started with hers. Right, and Martha, I'll just... How, how long do you like to knead? Since, I, since I've got the Bosch, I only need to do five minutes, but they've in, in the past, I used to have to do it ten minutes at a time. I, I, How long are you my, my recipe says nine minutes okay. in the Bosch, in, okay. in the bread maker. Okay. Um, and so it would be 20 minutes by hand. <laughs> Is that on level oh. two or one? Just one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, what <laughs> that can just it go down takes there. about Continue. twice as long kneading by hand as in a machine. The machine just really works it better a lot better but you don't have to do it with a machine that's why we're trying to do some of this so you know that you can um, but kneading it and there's a difference between kneading yeast bread and sourdough and I've done a little bit of sourdough but not a lot but everybody who works sourdough is real careful you know and they're stretching it and everything and the yeast is a little more forgiving and you really kind of work it in, you know. Um, okay. Okay. Melody so I is brought my big bowl, but I think I'm not going to show that because uh, you won't be able to see it. So I'm going to do it that way. So this is a mock mill. There's several different kinds of grain mills. I'm Melody, by the way. <laughs> um, in fact, Martha, you have, this is the kind I used to have. Um, this is a really old Mine was really old. Is yours pretty old? So it would it would grind into this basket. And for me, that was just, it was too hard to clean it and deal with it. So I didn't make bread as much when I was younger, when I first got one of these. But when I found this, this was the game changer for me because, and I think you could still use this very much, but this shoots directly into a container. It's and I love it. So the only thing is, is you, you have to set, you know, you have to, s you get it set where you want it, and then you don't really have to set it again. Um, you can send other things through it, too, like um, corn, dry corn. I think you can do chickpeas, too. I've done that. Rice, so you can create your own rice flour, um, you know, chickpea flour, garbanzo flour. Um, they're pretty neat. Um, this is a Mock Mill 200. And I, it's one of my favorites that I've found so far. And it's fast and super easy to clean, which hits all my important things. Have, has, has anybody seen, not, not seen wheat berries before? What they, this is the beginning part of flour for wheat. They, and these are, this is like you could plant this and, and make a, and grow wheat. This is the seed. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, and one of them is, the smaller one is the red, although that's a different kind of red. It's a dark red wheat berry and a white, hard white wheat. This is hard white wheat. I like to use 50-50, red and white. It's not white as in, like we think of white flour, but it's a, a lighter colored berry that creates a whiter flour. Whole grain. But it's still whole grain. It's still got all the nutrients. And, and we're going to, we'll have a little bit of time after we get this so that we can talk a little can more I about Can I use your that. wheat berries to do the demo? Mm-hmm. All right. Which one do you I'll want? I'll just do that one. Oops. Oops. <laughs> okay. 
So everything needs to stay dry. This is really important. Just like when, it, when you open up rice, you know, you say you've got a big thing of rice, and I usually have, I, ha I keep my wheat berries in this kind of a container because I get them by the 25 to 50 pound um, con package. Um, and you want to make really sure when you open that thing up that you get it closed right away afterward because you'll be surprised that a child will come by and wash their hands and then drip across things. <laughs> So you do not want this to get wet, and you don't want little um, uh, moths to fly into here and, and create weevils either. So you want something that's going to be seal that will seal airtight. And Martha, sometime you're going to talk about your yes gamma good thing. That's another good. Well, one. Let, we'll talk about okay. it after. So, so okay, so the, it's going to be noisy. I'm going to spare you. You won't. We won't be doing it very long. But I want you to see how it works. Okay. So we take this off. I always do that at the last minute. This has to start first, otherwise it can gum it up. These are stones in here. have to make sure you do this and then it's as easy as this that's all I do to clean it oh, nice. <laughs> you can get a hunt they can, you can get a mock mill 100 as well and that just won't go as fast so but it'll be less expensive so anyway there's it there it is it's warm and it's fresh so um, the stuff in the store has, um, has I believe it's the germ and some other things taken out because they will not be shelf stable so it's not going to have all your all your all the nutrients from fresh ground uh, wheat berries but it'll have a good share of them and it's still well better than white flour but you'll see I'm going to use a combination so okay let's get this off here I'm going to come in here real quick Yep, yep. Okay. Now it can be very satisfying to um, knead your own bread and, but, and there, you know, if you have arthritic hands or you have other things that you want to do, oh, will it show? Does that show down into here? Okay, good. Okay, so I'm doing this my opposite way, so bear with me. <laughs> okay, so I start out with cold water. Can you see into there? I really like this type of measure because you're looking in this way and you're not having to do this, you know. And so I can see I've got four, uh, I've got, well, it should be three and a half cups, so let me see here. I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of this. You know, it doesn't really have to get exact with water because if you've ever made, how, how many people here have ever made bread at home? Okay. So um, for those who haven't, if you've ever made bread, it's not really about the amount of flour um, because it's really about what it, when it starts to pull away from the sides and when it pulls off the bottom. So there'll be times, and it depends upon your weather and stuff, um, sometimes you'll put in more flour than other times. And so if you happen to go a little bit more liquid, it's not the end of the world. It's just a matter of what it looks like when it's coming off. And that's why I wanted you to see that. So, so I start with about three and a half cups of cold water. And I'm going to take it to five cups. So I use, I boil my water at home because it's not real safe to use the warm water from your, um, your water heater 
you know, because if you don't keep it a certain temperature, there's certain kinds of bacteria that can grow in there that aren't really good. Unless you're going to heat that water to a boil, um, it's better to, so that's what I do. And then it usually ends up being, you know, warm for what I need. Um, and let's see, what we're going to do. It's going to be a half a cup. Instead of using oil, I use applesauce. And in bread, you really can't tell that much of a difference. So I'm going to go about half a cup, and I'm following here. It's going to be five and a half cups, roughly. And if I need to finish off my jar, I don't worry about the exact amount because, you know, I can just figure it out on that side of it. And then for brown sugar, we're going to finish it up till it gets to six. I don't know. Can you see that? Can you see where it's coming up in the measuring? Okay. So I'm just adding it till it gets to six cups. It goes a little over. I'm not over worried. I'm going to do a little mix. Let's check that it's on. Good. This is a Bosch. You've probably heard of those. But um, maybe you have a KitchenAid instead of a Bosch. Does anybody? I haven't used those. So I'm, I've used the big mixers in a bakery many years ago. So I am going to start. Diana, that bread looks good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour this right in. But I, I kind of keep it going so it doesn't s s stick on the bottom. There we go. And then we are going to do, here we are. Going to go yeast next then salt, then some vital wheat gluten. This is instant yeast. Let me do that so you can see it. All right, so this is kind of pretty straight, fairly easy to memorize. It's two tablespoons yeast, flat tablespoons, two teaspoons, instant yeast and then we're going to do the salt and that's half that's one tablespoon um, and then actually let me go ahead and get this going to school. just enough to mix it up get it started and then one teaspoon of salt so I'll stick that there and then we're going to do the gluten. I like to use a little bit of uh, vital wheat gluten, and this is the same kind of gluten that you can make um, uh, fake meat with. It's that, that patty, you know, that stretches. And, um, but you use a little bit of it, and what it does is it, 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 what it does is it kind of creates almost like a bread flour. You know, in the store you can get white flour or you can get bread flour. And, um, you know, the difference is that ha the bread flour has a little more gluten in it. And you can create your own bread flour by doing one tablespoon of the vital wheat gluten in one cup of white flour. And it's cheaper that way. So I'm doing that because I like it because it gives the bread more of a, that, that kind of that chewy, soft uh, texture. And so it's not quite so crumbly. Um, right. You know. Right, so now I'm going to do um, about half a cup. This is fourth a cup. It's easier to get in the jar, so two of those. Now, putting the safety shield kind of hard to do it with with uh, those ingredients so now I'll put it on and now we are going to bring this over this is the white flour and I do four to five cups if I do five cups it seems to be a little bit more um, I like the texture a little bit better but you know it just depends so I'm going to do let's see if I can get so you 
This is actually a white flower. Okay. 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 And then this is the pre-ground whole wheat that I just did today. Okay. And I did 50-50 with red and white wheat berries. Okay. Okay. So bear with the noise. I'm just putting it on one. Two. So it goes in pretty fast, but I'm going to slow down. When it starts to pull away from the sides, I will start to slow down. I know some people say that if you put it in slower, that it can build the texture in the bread better. Um, I haven't experienced that. I'm, it probably does, but I'm always in a hurry. So. <laughs> okay, I do count this, but it's different every time. So I just know it's usually at least seven. Sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's less. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to start to pull away soon. Now sometimes what I'll do right here is I'll stop for a minute and I'll just take the, you see the, the parts that are sticking to the side here? I'll just take a minute while it's still soft and go around so I get that off. Because sometimes when it's rolling the dough, it won't get that. Sometimes it will. But. Okay, so I was on six, right? <laughs> Seven. Now you see how it's starting to spin? So really, it's lifting off the sides. I'm looking to see, is it off the bottom? And it's really close. So yep. OK, so I would say that's pretty much off the bottom. Can you see that? If you're looking down, you'll see it. Maybe I'll do a little bit more. You don't want to do too much, because if you do it, well, that's the point you stop, because if you do too much, it gets a little bit harder. The bread will get a little more dense. OK, so at this point, where am I sticking? I saw it here somewhere. Oh, here it is. So I'm going to put the lid on. This will help keep the moisture on. And uh, I'm going to just take it up to two for five minutes of kneading instead of doing it by hand. I mean, I could pull this out and I could knead it by hand for 10 minutes, which is what it called for for me. But why do that? Because this, when it's kneading for five minutes, I can go do something and set up and get ready for my pans. You know, so that helps me. So it's two minutes and it's going to be kneading. So I can go back to another room and do that. Yeah, or maybe you can take it in there. Yeah. David, could you help her? And then you could go on yeah. with what you want to say, and I'll be back. That's okay. So, um, yes, um, the kneading in the machine really helps a lot. You know, not everybody's going to have a machine that you can use at home, but you can certainly knead it by hand. And you saw Diana doing the kneading by hand over there. Um, one other thing is I would suggest that um, keep your eyes open at thrift stores <laughs> or online, you know, at some of these places that they're selling used or whatever. Um, I inherited a machine like that, only it's very old. <laughs> it looks a whole lot different. And I inherited it from my... Um, uncle who found it at the thrift store or at some um, yard sale somebody who did actually have one and then the same thing is with my mill over there and um, let me let me show you real quick um, am I okay on that
No, that's okay. Um, so this mill is a little bit different, of course, than hers. I actually am going to have my husband put some epoxy. It's, it's getting cracked, <laughs> but we're going to make it last. Um, it has a little catch for some of the flour so it doesn't get so much flour into the, into the motor. It has a, um, what they call an F, F, um, uh, what it, filter, F filter, um, that catches the flour up here too. When I finish grinding, this is what she was talking about. When I finish grinding, it's a little bit um, messy because there's flour all over here. It all grinds down into here. But if you don't have this on, it can go poof everywhere. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. But anyway, um, but I, I'm going to keep using it. I, I told Melody it's kind of a love-hate relationship. But you know what? I ran it six times this morning making that bread. <laughs> so, it is a workhorse. So anyway, when when I open it up, there's flour everywhere. Mine was still going 20 years later. So yours is still yeah. Still and then I I just you know brush the flour into here, and then I have to take this off and take any flour that uh, goes down in there. That goes right from the. It, it just protects the um, motor somehow. Anyway, and then, um, so it is a little bit more, you know, but if you can find it free or at a cheaper price, <laughs> you know, then you don't have the money for a nice one, which yep. sometime I want to save up, you know. And the important thing to remember is you do not want to use anything. You can grind a lot of things in them. You don't have to just grind, like I said, wheat berries. You know, people will grind rice flour. Um, they'll grind bean flour because you know a lot of people are using that now instead of gluten for things. Um, and uh, I, I've done, I do my own cornmeal, so I'll buy corn that's non-GMO. It's hard to get, you know, dry corn that's not been modified. But I, there's, you can source it, and then you just run it through, and you've got your own fresh cornmeal. The only thing that's, it's really important to remember is you don't want to put anything through it that's got a lot of oil and, and, and kind of almost uh, more moisture. It needs to be really dry. So um, I probably wouldn't use flax, flax seed. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> what, did you do it with soybeans before? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah, they might be. Oil. Too much yeah, oil. Maybe, okay. yeah. So anything that has a lot of oil, you ought to be careful, because it can cause problems with the grinders. So stay really dry, dry products. OK, I think I'm going to go ahead. The one, uh, no, uh-uh, uh no, uh-uh, no, it doesn't, it's, gr it's just, it's stone, and it's made by a German company who w was trying to minimize the issues with them, and it's fairly new, I mean, I think it's five to seven years, the technology, um, but it's great, and um, do we, I don't, did we give, did we get any, you know, I sent links in my recipe, but you can't see them on printouts. There were links to places where you could you could find out more about it. But oh. if you go to a, there's a YouTube site called Breadtopia. And if you go to that site, they'll, they'll educate you a lot about it. And they really like the mock mill. They also sell it. You can also get it on Amazon. But um, they've got some really good video demos showing you how to do everything with it and what it does. But for me, it's so much easier not to have to worry about cleaning, and then also you don't have to worry about that issue. Is if the filter fails, trying to, you know, the filter and then dust clean, in your clean kitchen. Your kitchen. <laughs> yeah. And trying to find filters that fit it, because for, for a while I ran out of the ability to get filters because right. it was getting too old. And, and I had to make up my own. Yeah, we had to make our own successful. for a little bit, but then I was able to find them again. Oh, yeah. So, good, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, so... Should be Yours is still uh, doing your, are you going to go ahead and put it into pans? I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you do that, 
We can also go ahead and put it in some of this if you want. That'd unless, be great. Okay, that's great. Sounds so like it's done. We're we're going to show you a couple different ways of of doing um, putting bread into uh, pans. One thing that uh, how many of you have seen the round bread at Apple Valley? We've been eating bread long before Apple Valley Thanks, round bread. My mother always made her bread in juice cans. <laughs> Pineapple juice, tomato juice, whatever, anything that size. I mean for, what, 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, it's really nice. It makes wonderful sandwiches, you know, sandwich bread. And um, the reason she did it, and my mother's right back there, straight back. <laughs> Um, the reason she did it in juice cans was to be able to get um, nine loaves in the oven. So you wow. at the same time. <laughs> so you take out the top rack, you only have the bottom rack, and you stack nine of them in there in the oven, and it works out really nice. Um, one thing, and um, yeah. You go ahead and do one of oh. yours, and then I'll show you no, how to you pour Feel them. free to keep talking, because it's going to take me a minute to get this out. Okay, yeah. Um, so then what you do is you let it rise, and like, like she's going to do, my bread recipe is the same. We rise at one time, um, because we've been doing it in the machine and stuff. And um, what I do is I put it in here, in, in the pan, and then I wait, I cover it with a um, tea towel or whatever, and wait to see where, when it's peeking over the top. If you let it get too big, when, once you put it in the oven, when we were kids, you know, us baking, we'd find it down here <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, j just over the top a little bit, you know, and then you put it in the oven because it's going to rise a little bit more in the oven. So this is my least favorite part. It's the most <laughs> messy. But it sure beats doing it by hand for 10 minutes. Uh, now, one thing I usually do at home is I usually, when it's done with five minutes, I'll hit it with just a little bit of oil. Just, and then it will come off easier because oh. it, it'll go around a, two or three or four times and then it'll... Okay. And then I also will um, immediately seal it up or put a little water in it so that I have time to clean this later because if you wait even a few minutes, it'll dry and be harder to clean. So I will usually seal it so that it won't do that. So it buys me time. <laughs> And it's better not to let this go down your drain, so I, uh, that what's on this, so you, this part isn't too hard, that part isn't. There we are. Okay, that hold that bottom part, yeah, there we go. Oh, and I did buy, I bought this extra attachment, because um, if you ever want to do smaller batches, and I like it for the big batches too, it goes a little farther down in the bowl than this. It just fits over it or under it, um, and it reaches a little bit more of the dough. So I liked that. I almost brought my Bosch just to show how old it was, <laughs> but it was still dirty. <laughs> we were doing bread till we left. <laughs> Okay, so I pre-oiled, now you can use flour if you want. I just like to do a little oil. I pre-oiled it. And I do a little bit more. Okay, so I've got that. If you don't have one of these and you're dealing with dough, I'd highly recommend it. You can get these on Amazon, they're wonderful. They used them in the bakery when I was a teenager. I was working in a bakery for a little bit, so they're wonderful. You so can get them at Atlas Re Restaurant Supply, too. So I have a little scale here, and um, you're going to put your bowl on it, and then it will zero it out on ounces. Make sure I'm on ounces. There, yep. And can you see that? 
see that okay? Okay, so you want 24 ounces. On ounces, yep. All right, I gotta look here. So I said 20. And that works out about perfect for five loaves for the size pan I use. Sometimes I end up with 24 and a half ounces, but I start out with, tw with 20. Okay, so let's just say that I got them all, I've got them all lined up. As soon as I get this one done, I'm just gonna put it into a little ball like this, and I'm gonna stick it here. <coughs> and these are fairly cheap, like, you know, shower caps. This is how I keep it. <laughs> so this is gonna, it's gonna be like oiled. It's sitting on some oil pan um, table. And it's gonna sit there and by the time I'm done, it'll have started to rise a little bit. And then I'll start with the last one, the first one I did first. So I'll do those. I don't, do you wanna do the 24 ounces while I'm showing what to do with the, the bread? Uh, you mean do. We oh. can do the rest of these. Uh, yeah. I, I'll or we do, can just yeah, put I can this do in that. the pan and do it later. Okay. okay. So let's just, so I say I have all five of them here, or you can do, um, sometimes I'll do pizza with this. Um, sometimes you can do monkey bread. So half of your recipe with monkey bread or pizza or what, or buns, which I think I'll show you that. Let me show, I'm going to steal some of this. Is that, do I need to Are you going to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you just start over, you just start over. There you go. Okay. So um, you're going to get whatever, you know, it's, it's good to pre-measure because, because the yeast is rising, you can't really gauge it very well by looks, like how, how much you're going to put, um, you need to get in a pan. So we just measure it with ounces. Um, so this, you can make a, a dinner roll, you know, you could do. That's yours. Okay. You can have it back. Because I, I was going to put them. Oh, oh okay. Matter. We don't anyway, have to do that. you know, I mean, these are smaller ones, but yeah. you know, you like that. Um, um, and then I will make um, hamburger buns too, and you can make Subway sub sandwich. It's nice because I mean, if you price good quality bread out there right now, sometimes a euro at four dollars or more, you can save yourselves quite a bit and. Some of these things, some of the machines, you don't have to use any of the machines, but if you choose a machine and you're doing it on a regular basis, it can pay for itself fairly quickly. So, okay, so I did not bring my bread pan with me. My bread pan is, um, it's like Norpro 8 inch. You can get those. I like those. They're like a, a lightweight um, pan that is, is easy to, for the bread to come in and out of and stuff, but they're about that big. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I've got my oil, just a little. So I flatten it. Everybody probably has their own way. So it's, you know, it's got, I'm trying to, I want to make sure I get some of the, most of the air bubbles out, but I go pretty fast. And you're kind of pulling it back, push. Pull in, push. Pull like this, and then I'm gonna take the ends, and I'm gonna kinda shape it, and I'm gonna tuck these ends like this, and then I stick it in my pan, like that. So, um, and these are a little bit small, but you know, you would hit it with a little oil, and then you'd stick it in there. This is, uh, let's just say. Is that oil or water? It's oil. This is avocado oil, because this is, Avocado oil, it has a high heat point, so I like to use that. It doesn't um, burn easily. Then you drop it in. And then I do this while it's right. It's good to hit it with a little bit of something just so it rises. You don't have to use a lot. And then I do this on my pan, and I sit this on a, I don't think I brought it with me. I, while I'm making my bread, I'll put it, I'll put some cookie sheets, like one or two cookie sheets in the oven with these pans that I have. 
not this size, but the bigger one. And then I leave it on 300, and then it's in there until it gets warm. I pull it out, stick it on my counter on top of a towel, and it's hot. It's, so when I put these on, it's already warm when this goes in. Then I just throw a towel over them after I've done this, and, they'll, and within about 20 minutes, they're about where I want them. So um, maybe those who have made bread have some additional suggestions. I'd welcome them. I wait until the bread is at least an inch over the top before I put it in the oven. If you let it go too much past that, it risks falling. Although I've noticed when I use the gluten, I can press, I can let it go a little farther. A little bit. Because <laughs> it's got that stretchy ability, you know. <laughs> but um, has anybody else had success with more than an inch? Success with that? You know, like it raises, how high it raises over the top. How high do you let yours raise? Yours is a little different. I, I let it raise up, up to yeah, about an inch over the top, you know, in of the middle, not the sides. <laughs> <laughs> an inch uh, over the top, and then and that's what all of those came out. They were done in this size pan, and those small ones came out really nice. Now, like that. do you do you cover yours with a towel? The da the damp towel works. This is the this is the old world way. They always did that, like a damp towel, like that. Um, how do you do yours? Yeah, I, I cover my, I don't always remember to dampen the cloth and dampen the towel. <laughs> I just put it over it. <laughs> and the, uh, the place that I put mine to raise is I have a gas oven. And like at it. the back of the oven, or, or of the stove top, is the vents from the gas oven. And so I, I leave mine out a little ways, not real close, but you know, and sometimes on the sides because it doesn't come out as directly on the side. So I put my, um, if I, I use those bread pans, I use yes, four of them. Yes, so we spread and it I out. I put mm -hmm. one, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So t the two sides are closer to the vent, you know, than the ones. I wonder if them. a cookie sheet on top of that would uh, give you more space. You know. Oh, I don't know, but the vent is comes out like this. It would be oh, hard to put okay. anything on there. Yeah. Yeah. I but haven't. I, I don't cook with it, gas, so yeah, well, that's I do great. Yeah. Like that, and <laughs> just you know, wait and go and do something else and come back and, and look at it. Yeah. So. So and then of course um, when I'm done with these because I don't want to clean them every time because they've got oil on them and stuff, I'll just throw them in the freezer. And you're going to eventually toss them, but you won't have them too long, because you know. But you'll you just throw them in the freezer. Then it won't go. Then the oil won't go. You know, stale or rancid. Yeah. So, do you have any questions? So it's 24 ounces for the small loaves. For the for the eight inch loaf, mm -hmm. not yeah. not that. I don't know what Martha's ounces are. 24 ounces for the, uh, for the regular size? For, I, yeah, I have something that looks like this, only it's this big. So how many ounces in the, in the for the little For the little ones, Mar Martha, how many ounces did you do for your little loaf pans? For my little loaf pans, I did 10 ounces, or 10.9, 10.9 in fact, almost the, 11. How about these? These, mm -hmm. I do one ounce, uh, about five, uh, one 5. pound, five ounces usually. So um, I have here, I'm, I'm going to show you. So it's about, it's a little over 20, 21, it's like 21 ounces or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll take no, some of this. Uh -huh. Well, let's see. Huh. Okay. Yes. So we're going to put in, yeah, 21.2 here. This is what I'm going to use. Okay. Like you, Melody. I'll do it right here. Just a little bit of spray of oil just helps so that it gives you more of a smooth um, surface, you know. If, I am, if you don't do something like that, you can use flour, um, but then you were, then sometimes you get the, the, it can get drier than you want it to. Um, I like to use oil because then it doesn't change the, te the texture of inside. Um, maybe if I was used to using flour, I'd figure it out. But with the oil, if you don't use oil, it'll this will start to stick, and then you'll get kind of a, a 
kind of a pointy effect and it won't be nice and smooth like right, this. Right, right, right. Um, so I just use a little bit of Pam. I do the bottom and then kind of <laughs> around the sides real quick. That's it. And I am not really good at doing, being particular. Once I get my um, dough out, my, my dough usually comes out, you know, kind of, kind of like hers, you know, and I cut it down the middle and, and uh, mine makes four loaves. And um, so then I weigh them all and it hasn't been very long at all, so I don't have to worry about it rising much. But I just kind of go like this, kind of, can you see it there? Just kind of a long thing like that. I take the bigger end, put it in the bottom. I tip the other end over, just push it down <laughs> on the side. Can you tell that? And that's it. So you have a nice rounded it's top. It's a, a to nice it. rounded top. And um, yeah, some of them, let me show you. Some of them might have a little crease, you know. But that's only one slice. Just one slice has that, you know, so I don't worry too much about it. I'm more for the time rather than... now. Let me show you these two, the difference. I've made five batches of bread this morning. I've run my mill six, seven times, and I've made every mistake, not quite every. <laughs> I've made mistakes. So I was trying to do two or three things at once, and um, I had already taken one batch of that bread out of the oven. I had this one mixing while I had breakfast in the oven. And then I got the breakfast out and then I had this, uh, I put it in the pans and then I promptly put it in the oven. <laughs> Just you forgot like that. to let it rise. Just like that. <laughs> I didn't let it raise. How much? Like, Two minutes later, I'm like, oh, oh no! <laughs> so I ran and grabbed it out of the grabbed it out of the oven. Didn't even oh, think. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, aloe vera. <laughs> yeah. I had an aloe vera plant. I almost, if I had had time, I would have potted one up and brought it as a prize for somebody. <laughs> but anyway, I'm doing fine. But. I let this rise, and that was about all it was going to get. But you know what? It's maybe a little more dense, but, you know, <laughs> somebody's going to yeah, eat it. <laughs> right. And it's super good for you. So, Melody, I wanted to ask you if you um, make hamburger buns and stuff like that, then um, do you put, um, do you mash them down a little bit to make them a little bit flatter? Um, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to work on that myself. That's actually not a bad idea. That's what a good I idea. thought. I, I don't make know, them a lot. Let, let it raise a little bit, and then just before you put it in the oven, what I was going to do was take a cookie sheet, just kind of flatten it down a little yeah, bit. That's probably a good idea because then it, you'll and have it whiter than. Right, <laughs> right, right. So anyway, um, let's see. Okay. Some of the other things that we wanted to go over. Some people have had yeast problems. Um, I, unfortunately, the lady who called me and wanted to come, I don't think she was able to come, uh, but she said, I can make biscuits, I can make, you know, any other quick bread and stuff, but yeast fails me every time. One of the things that yeast, yeast can get old and so, you know, a lot of people will keep it in the refrigerator or something like that. My mother has always kept it in the freezer. And I have, since I've been making much more bread and everything, you know, you don't think to take the yeast out of the freezer ahead of time. And I've just wondered if that made any difference. 
but I don't think it does, because <laughs> I've done it twi two different ways. You know how they say eggs work better if you leave them out? <laughs> That's hard to remember to get them out ahead of time. <laughs> but anyway, so the, the frozen yeast, the same thing with flour. Now, what we were talking about bread flour, uh, uh, freshly ground flour, freshly ground flour loses its potency, or <laughs> I mean, you know, the nutrition, loses it pretty fast, you know, because um, when it's exposed to air. But what I do, um, I usually grind when I'm going to be baking, but sometimes it's just, easier to have a little bit in the freezer. So I have a little bit of the, each of the kinds of flour that I use in the freezer so I can quick grab it. And I put it in the freezer right away after I grind it and then I have it available. Um, what I was going to say about the yeast, uh, oh, it, the yeast and the flour, even the flour being cold like that, doesn't seem to hurt because I use pretty hot water, um, you know, for my, it, as long as it's not With boiling, they say, for my bread, yeah. yeah. And so what I do is in my Bosch, I put my pretty hot flour, I mean pretty hot water, and then I put my flour, because you'll see my recipe calls for then yeast, I have three, uh, cups of flour, and then the yeast, and then I do a couple turns, and then we let it sit for 20 minutes, and it bubbles up. But, you know, because the cold flour oh, and the it. whatever, it, it's not going to be so hot mm -hmm. that it's going to um, Yeah, so it to like with yeast, uh, you definitely usually don't want it too hot. You want it warm to more than warm, you can do that. But I think 130. She, normally, she wouldn't do it too hot, but with her cold flour, that works out. To, yeah. Because you're not putting it in first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then um, for me, the mistake I was making was I was putting in the refrigerator door my yeast. And, you know, I wasn't making bread a lot. So about three months later, when I went to make bread again, it was not working real well. And so I started... I actually, I like your freezer idea. I'm going to have to try that too. But I started putting it in, you know, just a canning jar in my crisper drawer and that doesn't get open very much and I haven't had trouble since then. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm able to finish the whole package. What are those mm -hmm. three pound? What are those? The, the big packages of instant yeast. One pound or and two pounds. If, two you're, pounds, if you're gonna start making bread at all those can be worth it because they're not that much more expensive compared to the little packets mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. to get the bigger ones um, what, and you can choose whether you want instant or regular. Another thing I wanted to talk about quickly, why, why do we use um, whole grain flour? This, this bread here, and each of you can take um, some bread, um, this bread is made with 100% hard white wheat. Yeah. Um, I use the hard red wheat and the hard white wheat. Okay, and I use half of each, okay, for when I grind my flour. And so I actually have all pr uh, freshly ground flour. And what they say, um, I have a book here uh, by Sue Becker. Um, and on your handouts, I have... Um, information on her, uh, the link to her um, presentation. It's about a three hour presentation. You can watch it in smaller segments. But it talks about the benefits of freshly ground flour. There have been um, a lot of people, uh, little kids don't get ear infections nearly as much. Um, Older people, they don't have the psoriasis, you know. It, the thing is, the, um, Sue Becker really explains it very well. She is a food scientist. She started out wanting to be a physician. 
and in college. And then she realized, oh no, I want to have kids and uh, you know, that's going to take too long. So <laughs> then she started out pharmacy and oh no, you know. So her um, counselor in college said, well, how about a food science? And the woman is, I, I think she's brilliant. <laughs> I mean, you know how physicians and pharmacists and, well, physical therapists, you know, a lot of people do a lot more research. And she is totally research-based as a food scientist. She will explain even the physiology of a lot of, of uh, conditions. Hmm and um, how using whole grains is really good, uh, is much better for you. So I, I just cannot really explain it like her, so I wanted to put that there. Now some places like Whole Foods, is, does Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, there, were, there are some places that sometimes will grind wheat for you. Oh, okay. So it, it's worth checking with them. I, haven't, I should have checked before, but I know that there are places like that that will do that. They'll, not, they'll sell the wheat <coughs> and they'll grind it. So. I'm not saying you have to do it. You don't have you to grind your own wheat. I just am throwing it out there. Yeah. For you people can certainly use the flour from the store. I, right. I was just thinking I should show you a, a simpler way too to roll something. You know, you don't have to do the, f that's good, but you can just flatten it. You know, you want to get the extra air bubbles out. It doesn't ha you don't have to do it for too long, but then you could, you could just roll it too like this, and then tuck the ends in. Oh, to put in the pan. Right. Mm -hmm. This is a tiny one, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that would probably work. The thing is, is that you want this almost directly down, mm -hmm. because when it raises, it, if you have it sideways, it'll come up sideways like that. Yeah, it will. So. And even on some of my loaves, you can see <laughs> the side. So I mm. like to put They're mine. not too bad, you know. Do you store but yours you in the... see that. Mm -hmm. Martha, do you store yours, your bread in the freezer between? Yeah, I yeah. put mine like in the freezer. I store mine in the freezer um, in a bag. And uh, some people will do it uh, double bagged. Uh, they like it better that way, uh, especially if you're storing it a longer time. Um, I, we've always kept fresh bread like this in the refrigerator. But and in reading Sue Becker's um, stuff, and I'm realizing it dries out even more in the refrigerator too. So I leave it on the counter. But you know, if you're not going to go through the whole thing at once, a whole loaf of bread, uh, not at once, but you know, over five to six days, then you'll want to um, divide it up, you know, cut it up and put some of it in the freezer and, and use yeah, some of it out. It goes about five days from yeah. the, on the counter. Mm -hmm. um, but that freshness that you get right when you first bake it, the closest I've come to keeping that in a freezer, because eventually the moisture does, it's still good. It just doesn't have that fresh, chewy, tech, you know. So the, the closest I get to doing that is if I double Ziploc it, and then you just use the Ziplocs for other things. So you do a Ziploc this way, and then you do the other one that way, and get the air out of both of them. Then I, when I take it out, it's almost the same. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so if anybody does, do any of you have any questions on what we've been doing? Yes, Cindy. If you put the, the yeast in the freezer, does that make it kind of like indefinite? More so. Has yours lasted longer how long than does it, if you, like the bread in the the bread yeast in the jar? How long does that actually last before it really doesn't? That's last? a really good question. Oh, it is its effectiveness. In in the what? Several months. You yeah, know, I, I mean, know it goes past six to nine at least in the refrigerator in the crisper drawer. What right. about the freezer? In, in the freezer, about a year. Okay. Don't you think? I, I've, I've had stuff a year. Yeah. Yeah. So. Did you want to do, does everybody know how to check your yeast to see if yeah, it's before you use it? Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to, I earlier I meant, thought of that. Oh, and don't forget, we need to remember that if when somebody's using yeast, be sure and use the, the sweetener with it. Because yeah. Because it needs that to eat and develop it. Yeast usually needs sweetener. It's funny how my recipe doesn't put the sweetener in, 
and it bubbles up. Mm -hmm. But then you put the sweetener in afterwards. Huh. It's weird. Oh, oh, hmm. But is there any way to revive over yeast? Not really. That's a great question. <laughs> Uh, no. Re re it all, no. It'd be like a seed that is expired. Okay. How do you test? Is that how you test by putting it okay. in some water and sugar? Yeah. Go ahead. So um, usually, it used to be the way we always did bread was you put your water in, you put your sugar in, you put your yeast in, and wait mix to it. see it and mix it up it a little bit and see if it activates. Yeah. Three to five minutes to see. You know your yeast is no good. Right. That's right. Yeah. Especially if it's most important if you haven't used it for a while. Yeah. So like if you're regularly using it, you know, but if it's been a while, it's not a bad idea to check it. Right. If you eat it in a glass jar, you're much more apt to be able to keep it longer. Yeah. Glass jar is better to keep it yeah. in. Yeah. Glass jar, I think so. Too. I think so, too. Um, and the, here's another idea, too. Let's just say you forgot to proof it. You know, if I had forgotten to proof it and then I found nothing was really happening with my dough, I might, if I had the other yeast, like sometimes I'll keep more than one block of it up in my cupboard that's, you know, um, vacuum sealed. Um, I might still whip up something with water and see if I can mix it in and then just add some extra flour and see if I could make it. So I, it's not like you can use the same old yeast, but you could still potentially activate the dough. So, it, and save it. So with you some new yeast. With yes. some new yeast. So it, it, another question about yeast. Bread machine yeast is only to be used in bread machines, or can you use it to, to make your regular bread? Probably, we, you should be able to use it for regular bread. I think it's a fast yeast, isn't it? I think it? it's just It's like instant an instant yeast, yeast is what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And I forget what it is. Is it one and a half tablespoons? What is it in a packet of yeast? Uh, in a packet, it's about two and a half teaspoons. It's two it's and a half. Not so quite it's, yet almost a, it's not quite a it's tablespoon. It's almost a tablespoon. Three teaspoons is a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. So Yes. I don't think it's that much myself. You I don't know. have to do the, didn't they used to say you had to do like five, three to five minutes to develop your yeast before you put it in? But I don't know. If, do you uh, do that? I, uh, you mean regular yeast? I remember yeast? when I, yeah. Regular yeast? Yeah. Well, usually regular yeast, yeah, I, I leave it a little bit, you know, let it activate and stuff like that. Before but I before I add the flour and stuff or like my recipe, the recipe that I follow, um, it puts water, flour, and yeast and you just mix it up just a little bit and then let it set 20 minutes and it just froths up, you know. And then you put your honey in your oil <laughs> or I use applesauce again like yeah. her. All of this is made with applesauce, by the way. So and you notice that we were using oil around the bread, so you're still going to have oil, but why put more oil than you have to? So mm -hmm. applesauce is a fantastic substitute for mm -hmm. oil. There's no reason you need to use oil in your actual bread um, but it is nice to use it on the outside for things. And when you're done, like when you take it out of the oven, I like to hit it with a little bit on the top because it makes it look pretty and shiny and it's softer, you know. Mm -hmm. But so. with the instant versus the regular yeast, it, I have not found bulk, reg, uh, bulk instant yeast yet. I'm trying, but I use regular. You can get it at Country Life. Yeah, uh, natural foods. There's, there's, and, um, and Amazon. Yeah, and I, I put some um, links there. One thing I want to say is, um, Azure Standard. You'll see a link for Azure Standard. Uh, I think I put down at the bottom of one of those pages um, resources or where, where to big get bulk, bulk, bulk foods. Items. Yeah, bulk <laughs> items. Mm -hmm. Do we have Country Life on there, too? What? Do we have Country Life on there, too? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. we okay. yeah. They're both on there. They're good, uh, they're good there's sources. There's Azure Standard and Country Life. Country Life is from just east of South Haven, e northeast so of South Haven. It's like a 45-minute drive. Yeah. Uh -huh. and so you can pick a bunch of stuff up, or you can order online, and, and I think it's like if you spend $99, it's free it's shipping. A, uh, 400 I For thought. most. No, free shipping. Oh, free shipping. They changed that. Okay. Or, or if you have a big order, they'll deliver to your house if it's 400 Yeah. Something like that. 
So also my, that's why with my, I, I'll wait till I have my big 25, 50 pound bags that I'm needing, and then I'll order several things like that at, at once. But I found but Azure Standard is another. Yeah, I found that I really want to. I wanted to, um, or I compared prices between Country Life and Azure Standard. Azure Standard, I've seen. I follow a lot of YouTubers that are homesteaders and things, and they order through Azure Standard, um, which is from Oregon, and they have over 2,600 stops all across the United States, drop-offs places. And so um, what they, they I did was... They charge a little bit for, they charge a little bit. It, yeah, it, it's, oh, I mean, like for uh, the most I've paid for shipping was like eight something, oh. you know, and... Maybe it was the amount I put in my cart. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know, a bit maybe more. it was. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so what you do with Azure Standard, you order online, and then my, uh, our drop-off here is on the south side of Mishawaka at the Meyer so close. on Freeman High. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they send it all out. You get an email telling you when the pickup is going to be. The hard part is that you never know. <laughs> So you have to be available. It was on Mother's Day at <laughs> 2 o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> this last time. But anyway, um, but I find that the prices there are much better on grains than country life. Now, usually I don't have too much trouble. Uh, today we had to kind of pick through, you know, to make sure there weren't any... Oh, other Rocks things, or yeah. anything in it. Um, usually, I don't have too much trouble with them, but you know. Now, I will say that is important for some bread, for some grain machines, and mine is not. They say I haven't had an experience yet, but they say you, you do not want rocks right. going, going through my machine. Right, you know, exactly yours, because you, no, because so, yours especially because right. of the stones. So the it's. Stones. It, and I haven't had problems with Country Life's grain like that. I did read about that with Azure, but I saw a lot of people really liked it too. So maybe just yeah. a few that had that there, There's uh, the lady whose uh, recipe that I use here, um, she likes um, Pleasant Hill grains. Hmm. Um, I didn't put that on there. Pleasant Hill grains, um, you can order through them. It comes in a bucket already. Not in. Um, so you could save the bucket and use it for storing other yes, things, right? Yes. So it comes in a bucket already. I'm going to move up here, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, as your standard comes like this, I get 25 pounds because that's what I can handle. <laughs> I don't get 50. Anyway. I have a son that eats bread like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I do is I get it like that, and then I put it in a bucket. And this bucket, you buy these separately. Here, let me put it up here so you can see. You buy these separately um, from the bucket. And so, you know, your lid, you just toss. <laughs> but this comes, it's as a ring. I think I'll do this. It's a ring with a lid in it. Okay? And so what you do when you get it, you take the lid out, put the ring on, then you gotta, <laughs> you know, work it all the way. That's the hard part. And then you just Put it on like that, tight. Your little mouths aren't going to get in there. Nothing's going to get in there. Were you saying something? Well, I mean, if you have um, a bucket that has the lid on it, food savers? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah. 
Well, not only that, in a, with the food saver, you can get an attachment that goes over a, a jar. quart yeah. jar. Yeah. The half gallons don't you? Yeah. yeah, the half gallons don't work as well because they're awful big, but it works really well. You can save your grain in quart jars. And I save my nuts that way too, and it extends their life quite a bit. Buckets, um, I buy, I have bought some at Apple Valley. I have some that I got, I'm, I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> That's right, you can Alice, get most, a lot Alice of these at Apple Valley. Alice and I found a place up just north of Sisters Lakes that um, does, processes food and... Um, they have buckets like that? Yeah. I got 50 of them. I got 50 of them, but <laughs> for my garden too. Okay, but they they have um, they use applesauce and or they they make these applesauce um, fruit cups and stuff like that. And so they have some stuff. Uh, you have to wash them out when you get them and stuff like that. I haven't tried it for this yet. That is part of my goal. <laughs> but part of it, I'm going to grow my zucchini in it <laughs> and stuff like that. But anyway, um, these work really well. I don't want to take much more of your time, um, but I hope that we have put a lot of information in your handouts. I hope that has been helpful to you. If you would, would not mind to do your lost skills uh, post survey real quick, and then we are going to, um, Diana, can you find something to put the things in? We'll fold them and, and for a drawing. Oh, one thing I brought here was, um, this is a gluten flour. I got this at Apple Valley. You can get it in bulk. This is a gluten flour that we used. Yeah, there's and a lot of these things you can get at Apple Valley. Too. Yeah, They're, they'll be a little bit more expensive, but it can be worth it to be right, right. close. And, and this and is the way I keep my yeast in the freezer. I have bought it because you know I've I've just bought the active dry yeast from Costco, and I I was going to ask you, what um, as long as it's vacuum sealed, you know, like you buy it and it feels like a brick. And then once you cut it, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would last at least a year that way, but maybe longer. I, I, Probably it, longer. When yeah, I mean it's on the store <laughs> shelf and everything. Your, yours, if you haven't opened it at all, it's probably just fine. I would proof but it. Test it. Yeah. You know. I think it should be, as long as it's still vacuum sealed, I really think it should be. Mm -hmm. But once you open it, put it in a jar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Okay, well, um, a, yeah, one, perfect. One, one, perfect. Oh, did you have one question? Yeah. Yes, I would tuck it, I would tuck it in. Yeah. You know, yeah. In other words, yeah. Go ahead. Some people will roll it out, roll your oh, yes. uh, dough for your like flat, and, and then you do it like cinnamon rolls. Oh, okay. okay. Just, roll it Just up. kind of put it That's all. That's actually the best way to do it. All along <laughs> it, and and then roll it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Please put your name on it. Well, that's just for. The, Please put your name on it. Because we don't know it. who you are for the raffle. Yeah, or just the, for the, the drawing. Oh, you didn't get one. <laughs> well, she's bringing. She's bringing one. <laughs> if, if you don't care about the drawing, you don't need, don't 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 need to put your name on it. One pail, 25 pounds. Now, you know, the interesting thing is the hard white wheat is a little bit bigger than the hard red wheat. And when I got it, I'm like, ooh, is this going to fit? It does, just barely. 
it just barely fits. But then again, I, what I do is I have this on my pantry shelf, and then when I need to, I fill it from here. So I have, you know. So, and do people have different uh, questions about which kind of berries to use, and like I, I come, I've come to a 50 50 too. But they said, I think they said the, and, uh, the white wheat berries might have a little more gluten, and the red, though, have a little bit more of that. Nutty, nutty taste that you like mm -hmm. in bread. So combining 